Okay, hi. Uh, my name is Erika London. I work in uh, SCB. Uh, I'm a team lead for our Center of Excellence for AIDA. Mm -hmm. So who is AIDA? Or what is it, maybe? Um, so, AIDA is uh, SEB's uh, digital uh, employee, a virtual agent. Uh, she has some cognitive capabilities. Uh, she's scalable. Uh, she can chat with a lot of customers at the same time. Uh, she is uh, there 24-7. She's always happy and nice to the customers. And beautiful, yeah. And she's also built on artificial intelligence, AI. Um, just a crash course in AI. I would not spend a lot of time on this, but AI is kind of the general concept uh, of some kind of intelligent behavior uh, that a machine or a computer or system has. So you call kind of the whole concept, it's, it's AI, and then you can divide it into different uh, parts. Machine learning is kind of an approach of, of how to reach uh, artificial intelligence, how the machine learns uh, new things. And then we have neural network that is kind of a, a way to mimic the human brain, the, the synapses and, and the neurons in the brain. Uh, so how the computer can, can do the problem solving and, uh, and sorting out the information and classify the information uh, in a good way. So that is what Ida is built on, uh, how, how she uses this to, to uh, uh, as a technique and ground under. Uh, Okay, crash course in AI. If we should put uh, uh, AIDA on the, the AI landscape, so to say, we have some products uh, that is uh, really good at uh, things that humans are not that good at, uh, analyzing a lot of data, for example. Uh, what IBM Watson and Google DeepMind, those kind of products. And then we have the chatbots, uh, we will hear uh, about uh, Nina uh, later on as well from, from, uh, from Nuance. And uh, those more question-answer question, question answer driven uh, chatbots. And uh, uh, Aida is a conversational driven AI, so she is really good at, to do things that humans are good at, having this kind of natural uh, conversation with you. Okay. So why? Why are we doing this? Uh, as you know, a lot of this day, these discussions that has been going on here is really that, you know, the financial industry and maybe the industry uh, at a whole is, uh, is undergoing a tremendous change. We need to do things to, to stay competitive as a bank. Uh, who knows? Will we be a bank in five years or not? Or will we be something else? We don't know. We have to do things. So, for example, uh, one thing is to explore new technology. We really need to uh, see what we can do with the new technology that there, there is on the market. So, uh, exploring AI, blockchain, uh, um, data lakes, big data, uh, we really need to start doing that to, to be able to see what, what we can do with it. And IDA is one part of it, to have this kind of uh, um, enhance the customer support uh, and use uh, AI in that, that sen uh, sense of way. And then, of course, we have an increasing demand from our customers. You know, we need to be everywhere, anywhere, at any time, in any channel. You know, there are a lot of uh, demands <laughs> that we need to, uh, to take care of from, from the customers. And of course, this is a way that we could actually uh, lift off uh, first line um, support, customer interaction to, to have uh, 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 with IDA in the first line support. And then we can actually free up time 
to spend more quality time with the customers in the in the second line and with more complicated uh, support and questions. So it's about the change around us, it's about the customers and also it's about ourselves as employees in the bank. Um, yeah, maybe there will be some jobs that will be taken away uh, if we have IDA in first line, but a lot of new jobs will be created, some we probably don't even know about today. So we need to take care of our resources in the bank and uh, do other things, find those jobs. I have a job that I didn't know would exist uh, a couple of years ago. So we really need to use our resources and our employees in the bank in smarter ways. So that is why we are exploring uh, IDA and to really live up to our vision to deliver world-class service to our customers. Okay, so I will talk a little bit about our journey because we actually started already in end of 2015, exploring IDA. Uh, on, uh, the product is called Amelia, and it's a product from IPsoft. Uh, we have named her IDA. It was actually an internal uh, competition on our intranet where every employee could send in suggestions of, of names that they thought that our digital employee would be named. So. Ida was a really good suggestion, and that was the one, the name that was uh, was uh, selected. And it's AI, of course, as artificial intelligence, and it's aid, as in help, and it's also uh, in uh, influence from uh, from the first female um, employee in the bank and in the finance industry in Sweden from. Uh, beginning of 1900 that was called Alida, so it's inspired from, from that name as well. Okay, so we started 2015 and we wanted to try this out internally in the bank, really didn't want to go public right away, so we started with our internal IT service desk. So uh, all our employees uh, calling our global service desk and get help with questions about uh, Outlook and Internet Explorer and password reset, etc. And we wanted to find those use cases where we actually could help the user end to end without no human interaction. So for example, unlock your Windows account. It's a pretty common uh, question that our service desk gets, especially after a really long summer vacation in Sweden. Everybody tends to call and uh, have forgot their password. So it was one of those cases that were really good to, to automate. So uh, now uh, Ida takes care of uh, more than 50% of all the, the unlock accounts uh, automatically. So she, she unlocked the computer for you if you have locked it. So a couple of those use cases where she actually performs things for you internally. And then also she can answer a lot of questions about regular IT problems, Internet Explorer and Outlook and those things. So started internally with a pilot, 600 employees tried her out in beginning of 2016. And then we actually got this really good result. So we, we rolled it out to all our 15,000 employees uh, uh, later on. And then, of course, we were curious, could we launch this to our, towards our customers to have her as a customer uh, agent? And we did. So in end of 2016, we silently launched her on our website, seb.se, because we don't, didn't want to do a big bang out of it. Uh, we wanted to sneak it out so that we could try it out together with the customers directly from the beginning. And uh, to be honest, from the beginning, she was kind of uh, not good. <laughs> uh, because she is, uh, she is built uh, on uh, the English language and uh, we decided we wanted to have her on Swedish when we launched her because most of our customers are in Swedish. So, and that is not a language that is, is a really a big language and it was not, um, not supported by, by IPsoft or actually they said that they had a Swedish language and that was what we also launched, but we 
quite soon realized that it was not uh, perfect Swedish. It was more of a bad Google Translate Swedish. So we had to train her all over from the beginning, uh, train her with the Swedish language. So we did. We have spent a lot of time on the Swedish language. Uh, so today she... Um, we, s we started to, you know, just add uh, things, normal questions that we also have on our website, but of course that she can answer as well. So today we have her as a chat uh, window on seb.se where you can st tell a lot of different uh, kind of questions. Okay, so um, as I said, internal IT service desk. Um, a lot of conversations around uh, unlock the accounts. Uh, we track how good she is in answering uh, in a correct way, in a good language, and those kind of things. And uh, internally, she is really good because it's English and the natural language for 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 Ida. Um, and for the uh, the customer service. Um, Maybe uh, of, she's good at Swedish right now, but uh, but we have tracked the progress along the way and really been working hard to to get her where where she is today. She's not perfect, but uh, uh, still a lot more better than when when we, when we started. We have actually now we have uh, maybe 250 chats per day, so it's not a lot, but uh, it's still. Uh, <laughs> quite uh, a lot uh, from where we started and we haven't really also uh, put her on the, the really front page. It's more of a, of a little behind where you can see chat with, with, uh, with her. So it's not the picture or anything. Uh, and then we also have this possibility if she is not able to answer the question, she can escalate it to another human agent that will continue to chat with the customer and then they already have this uh, this chat from from Ida, so they can just continue. So they don't need to ask all the questions uh, again. And she can perform one thing for you, and that is to book a meeting. So you can actually book a meeting in any of our branch offices or uh, on a phone with an advisor um, instead of sitting in the phone line waiting just to book a meeting. So she can actually do that. Okay, so what have we learned? Um, from the beginning when we did this launch, we thought that um, our own employees would be a little bit maybe resistant uh, since this could be something that could take their jobs. Um, but we have already from the beginning had have the approach that this is an exploration journey. We are exploring technology and what this can give us, it's not a kind of a cost saving program. Uh, so by having that approach, at least that is my opinion, that I think that we have really succeeded with this and got buy-in from, from, uh, um, from the employees and really wanted to, to help out and, and teach Ida uh, all the stuff that she knows. Um, yeah, as I said, we thought that it was just ready to use the Swedish language. It was not. We have spent a lot of time on that. Uh, we all also thought that it was could be tricky to learn banking processes, but that was not the case either. It was quite simple actually to do that. Um, and then uh, from the beginning, we thought of Ida only as a digital employee. But we have learned that we have, you know, we have actually also brought up a new channel to us, a customer, a chat channel. We haven't had chat uh, earlier, so we also have this uh, new way of communicating with the customers in, in customer support. And of course, new technology, no best practices, no answers. Uh, we have been finding out, hitting the wall uh, along the way, but it has also, of course, been a lot of fun uh, exploring this new technology. And we have also seen some new customer behaviors uh, where actually uh, customers that maybe will not uh, call us or contact us in a way actually start communicating with us in, in uh, the chat. So that's, that's really fun. Uh, so what does the customer uh, think? And now this is in, in Swedish. 
And here it says that it's, you know, useless. It's 10th time I, I'm using it and she doesn't understand a thing. Not good. But I also think this is uh, comments from early uh, beginning when we started and she, she was not good at all in Swedish. Uh, oh no, are you a robot? Oh, so, so we can actually see that in the log files when we are looking about the chats where the, the employees, um, uh, the customers have, uh, that quite a few of them doesn't even know that they are chatting with a robot. And I, that I think is a good, uh, uh, because then they, they, they don't know. So you actually feel it's, it's kind of human. Oh, you're fantastic. Fast, correct. So uh, actually quite a lot of positive uh, responses from the, from the customers. And I think that the, uh, the approach we had when we, we, we really launched this in an early phase, uh, that we could try this out with the customer, get the customer feedback, I think it was brave because uh, usually we tend to have the perfect product that we want to launch to the customers. Now we didn't, and we really tried it out together with the customer, as also Mark talk, talk, uh, talked about to, in the innovation lab, to really get the customer in the process to develop uh, our products. It's, it's a key. Uh, mm? So, do you want to meet her? <laughs> sure. Let's see. No, this is English, actually. Let's see if I... Internally, we have her in Swedish, uh, English. Hello. And uh, externally, it's in Swedish. I will actually move into her mind directly, so you will have that kind of view of it. Hello. Okay. Nice to see you, Erica London. Thank you. Nice to see you too. Um, I have done some 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 pre uh, work here, so I will actually ask uh, Ida here that um, as an SCB employee, you should know who is our CEO. So I will ask her that. Uh, who is Yuan Torjibi? I'm sorry, dollar name. I don't know the answer to that. Okay, so the dollar name, that's the, the demo uh, environment, not picking up my name. But okay, so she doesn't know, not good, I will teach her. So this is what I, what I copied, I, I copied a text and here the answer is, who is Yuan Torgibi? So here you will see how she kind of uh, digests the information, sorts it out in a network. Uh, I got that. All the... the the data related to each other, so kind of the neur neur neural network that, that's in our brain. So now I have teached her uh, this text, so now, now I will ask her again, who is... <coughs> now you see the green bubble there, or yellow. From 29th of March, Johan Torchibai is the new CEO of SAB. So now she's learned this text. I pick out something from the test. Text asks her, and and she she uh, picks that up. Right now she can only remember things in the conversation that we have. Uh, further on, oh, of course, uh, um, behind the scenes, of course, we teach her a lot of text where she uh, learns the Swedish language. But this more knowledge based. Um, there will be in the next version of 
her, then she will remember things that we uh, knowledge that we put directly into her. Okay, so this is kind of the part the the neural um, ontology where where she processes uh, the language and sort that out to be able to to have a dialogue uh, with you as a, uh, as a human. Then there is something called process ontology, and this is where we can actually pre put predefined processes into Ida, so she can follow that. So if I have, uh, this is the IT service desk, so if I have problem with the Outlook, um, Just for double check, do you need help with Outlook? So here she finds a process that she thinks could be related to what, what I'm after. And uh, yes, I need help with Outlook, so I answer that. And then she can jump into this process. Thanks a lot. This is the list of Outlook topics I can currently help you with. Now she will be talking a lot. How to create a new profile recall at a public or shared calendar missing attachments recover lost emails recall a sent email create a new row free up space change account information. There's no stop. You can't stop her <laughs> when she start, <laughs> starts speaking. So uh, please type in the number of the topic which is closest to your issue or question. So I answer number four here. I'm missing some attachments. And there she finds another process to follow. To see attachments in archived mail, first go to Outlook file options, add-ins menu. And she can show you a movie of, of how to Scroll find check things. window up to see the full picture. Type next to load the next step or exit to cancel instructions. Um, so this is also then how we can teach her things that we Would want like her to, to really follow. Another topic related to uh, a predefined process. Uh, then there is also one thing called EQ that is more of the emotion. Okay. Uh, so she can actually uh, sense the emotion uh, if you have a typical language. Um, a bad language, uh, she senses that and follows and register. Here she have registered our dialogue. Uh, now it has been kind of natural. And in the top corner there, you see some kind of uh, uh, number of how, <laughs> how em emotionally wise our dialogue is. So if I express myself here in a bad, uh, you are, Stupid. Oh, she doesn't. I'm sorry to hear that. And you see her face is falls down. But yeah, so she can sense and and this is of course a kind of funny thing. But uh, of course she can use this if you have a dialogue and you sense that the customer is upset. You can actually guide the customer uh, directly m into a process or use it to escalate faster to a uh, human agent. Now she can, uh, f if you, she sense that the, the, the di dialogue is uh, kind of positive, uh, you can continue the dialogue, but if it's something that is more upset, maybe you will escalate to the human agent much faster than she had done otherwise. So this is kind of how she, she uh, uses uh, that. Uh, Uh, no, <laughs> no, she can't actually. Let's see what she does. Yeah, we can see. Can you? <laughs> can you calm down? Yes. Did she or not? <laughs> but um, <laughs> what no, was she? Yes. <laughs> Can you talk even slower? Yeah. Um, <laughs> so uh, 
this was actually what I'm going w w wanted to show you, and and we are still exploring uh, this technology. And what what's what's happening now is that we are trying to look into new areas, of course, uh, bo both internally uh, inside uh, uh, for our employees. What can we use it to more, and also externally to in other um, areas. So uh, where can we use it to? Uh, have this kind of first-line support to us, our, our customers. Uh, questions? Yes. Uh, I have a question. Um, this is a very good example, right? This is a solution. Uh, how do you deal with the bugs that you say that they have something wrong with the driver settings? How, yep. how do you deal with that? So we, we actually are a team. Uh, right now, uh, taking care of uh, of uh, <laughs> taking care of her. Um, so we are reading the log files right now. Uh, it's not like she uh, understands herself that she has done something wrong and uh, and learns from that. So uh, now it's actually us telling her that this was wrong. You have to uh, uh, respond that in another way. So to kind of retrain her. So that's that's how we do that. So by reading the log files, we get a lot of, of information that we use to enhance her all the time. So is there any chance that uh, she can be infected with a virus or? Uh, yes. Of course, I, I guess uh, as any IT system. Okay, so basically you will need to go through log files to find the problem, right? No, of course, we have a lot of, uh, you know, it's like, in, in that sense, it's more like an, uh, a rely, uh, like any normal IT system that you have to have a uh, um, secure setup of, of the system, of course. So she actually exists in, in SCB uh, domain, so she's not in, uh, in the cloud, and um, we have all the security uh, set up uh, properly for that as well. Uh, what is your opinion about uh, recent comments from Elon Musk and uh, <laughs> Bill Gates? So that's quite interesting as well. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, of course, uh, of course, we need to take care of of. Uh, uh -huh, about Elon Musk uh, comments that uh, he would actually and and. Um, um, even more interesting comment, I would say, is that uh, IPsoft uh, CEO, I don't know if you have heard a bit about him, he's called Cheetan Dubey, and he actually said that he, uh, Amelia would probably be able to go to, the, to March, to, you know, in Elon Musk's uh, rocket. Uh, let's see if that will happen, I'm not sure, but... <laughs> uh, so, so... Um, of course, we need to take care of, uh, of AI. Uh, AI will uh, learn itself in the future. But right now, it's kind of a, you know, AI is not a new thing. It has been uh, uh, here for, for ages, and we are developing all the time. But now it's more the time where products are popping up, where we can use AI in, in, in proper products yeah, on the market, but still it's a really uh, early phase and we need to, to explore that technology and take care of it as it is not right now. So f for now, uh, I don't think there, there are any co concerns about that, but of course in the bigger picture we really need to, to think about uh, how to take care of the AI and, and really set up the Roots and regulations around it. Uh, I'm more worried of of um, us as humans. Will we keep up? Will we uh, get behind in laws and regulations and things like that before it's too late? I think it's more up to us to really, you know, we need to to uh, to uh, to start working <laughs> with that. Yeah. Okay. Ethical the question guidelines. was about some uh, yeah, ethical questions. Uh, for example, when client uh, makes some uh, I don't know some some bad words about so how she reacts and and, and what's the situation, so how to, how to deal with them. Yeah, uh, 
we have, uh, you know, of course, looked upon it as she is uh, an SEB employee and teach her the, the la SCB language and, and how to react and react uh, in that kind of sense. Uh, of course, you know, there are, are a lot of, of discussions as well on sexual harassment on chatbots and things like that. So of course you need to take care of that because uh, she needs to answer in a way that SCB feels is, is okay, not, not answer in a, in a bad way or, or you know things like that. So of course we have uh, have uh, adapted to that. We we haven't written any guidelines or things like that, but of course we have have uh, had that in mind. If, if uh, I may. We have a question yeah, here. If, yeah. if, uh, two quick questions. Uh, is, is she available offline or is it uh, kind of in direct contact with a particular customer so that she would be able to help me with account balance or operations that I want to com complete? Uh, we don't have her uh, identifying the customer. So she is online, she is on seb.se, but she can answer questions uh, around our products and services and, and uh, some problem uh, solving, of course. But uh, we don't do things for the customer. That will be the next step where we actually log in and identify the user and can, can do things for the user. That we do internally with the IT service desk, but not for the for the customer yet. Hopefully soon. <laughs> I have a question. Uh, besides uh, artificial intelligence and uh, chatbots are rather modern and trendy things, uh, have you calculated cost effectiveness of uh, all investments you did buying the product, training, maintaining all the time, all your team? And for the, I, I mean, uh, for the longer time, is it cost worse project or is it just a funny thing to be modern and uh, up to date uh, service provider? Good question. Um, of course, uh, since we were started this two years ago, we were really early. And uh, as I said, we had the approach to have this as uh, exploring new technology. So it was not kind of a cost saving program approach. Um, so uh, in that kind of sense, yeah, it, it have costs and uh, we haven't seen that or actually we haven't calculated uh, if we have uh, invested and uh, got the, the, the return on, on investment. Uh, uh, of course we don't, uh, because um, it, it's uh, in that kind of early stage of, of technology and project. Uh, so, uh, yeah, of course I can't go into figures, but... Uh, No, we, we never had that kind of approach. We didn't have that from the beginning and we haven't had yet. Of course, that will be uh, a discussion uh, later on, but then it will be more of a, you know, how much time can we free up and use in other ways? Uh, that is how I see it. To spe for example, now in, in our, our customer service, we have two hours of phone line. You know, could we reduce that? That's a big, uh, big uh, uh, effort, uh, investment, of course, to really get that. Yeah. Do you know the reason why all artificial intelligence chatbots have female names? <laughs> <laughs> Laura, Siri. Uh, actually, we discussed that, uh, uh, me and Hans, that we present Nina later on. And uh, there do exist some, few, some male as well. I know Vodafone has one, and uh, Watson is, of course, so it's not only female. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so should we, uh, I will hand over to, uh, to Hans and uh, Nina. Thank you. Okay, hello everybody. Uh, my name is Hans Lindholm. I'm the product owner for Nina. Uh, at Swedbank. Um, my background is from IT and also customer service within uh, uh, our contact center in Swedbank. Uh, I, w I worked uh, quite some time uh, at Swedbank, uh, 20 years now. So uh, I, can <laughs> I can speak a lot about Swedbank in the in from a history perspective. 
if anyone wants to hear that, but now we're looking to the future and what we're doing there. Okay. We have had uh, Nina since uh, 2014, uh, and that's uh, four years now, and that's quite some time. Uh, when we uh, were going to buy Nina, there were like three or four bots out there. Now, it's like this. It's a bot explosion out there. We have bots for different things also. We have uh, the concierge bots, where Facebook tries to be. Um, we have shopping bots. The hardware bots that's in our phones. We have the business bots, what you heard, SCB and our uh, our bot. We have email bots that take care of our emails also. So nowadays, um, bots are becoming be becoming more more uh, more popular and more used. And why is that then? I, I think Mark Zuckerberg uh, sums it up really well. It's like this. It's a new app for every service that we need. Uh, and um, the the simple thing that we we are used to now is becoming more and more complex, like eight to ten uh, apps that we use every day for different things, and it's like up to thirty ones a month. And why 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 do we have have constructed that way? Well, it's because of the <laughs> of that uh, interface that we are dealing with. So the bots can like layer that, and you can talk to one bot, especially uh, this guy is into that. He, his vision is like, okay, you, you're going to talk to his like device, maybe it's not a phone, it's some kind of thing. How, hi, how can I help? That's Google's vision. And Google is a quite large company. So when these <laughs> people are saying stuff, then, then it tends to happen. And uh, just a small... Uh, thing about uh, the company around uh, Nina is called Nuance. And uh, there are now a lot of vendor comparisons out there, if anyone wants to see that. This is one of them from February this uh, last year. Uh, so there are a lot of this uh, um, vendor competition and, and comparison things uh, out there now. So um, just uh, Google this and you will find it. And 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 uh, it's also now uh, uh, they are uh, compared in different stages. I mean, with the automated learning, how is that process automata automation? That what uh, Erica showed you, human involvement. How is that? Uh, is that a good or bad thing? Uh, because nowadays, uh, now humans need to be in touch with the with the agent um, reports and so on. So there there are really good uh, comparison things out there now. One one is really good, three is, three is not so good. Mm, really bad, but not good. Okay, I was uh, <laughs> I, I was thinking, okay, who body else uh, is using Nina then? I, I, I don't want to take a bank as an example, that's like, like boring. I took Domino's Pizza as an example. Domino's Pizza is, uh, well, not the largest, but one of the really large uh, Domino uh, <laughs> the pizza delivery companies in, in the US. And they have uh, uh, Nina in the background, uh, ordering, helping them ordering pizza. And you can like uh, order pizza uh, in all of these devices. I don't know if you see them, but it's like uh, Google Home, Alexa. You can type a message uh, with a messenger. You can talk to your TV. You can do it in your car. You can have some kind of app. You can have a smartwatch. <laughs> you can text it, tweet it, speak to it. And and the the thing with Domino's, uh, their vision is like. Uh, it should be just so easy to order pizza wherever you are, uh, and it will be delivered. So they, are, they have gone, come, so come so far in their vision of uh, delivering pizza that they are saying now that they are a tech company delivering pizza. Yeah. Uh, yes? No. Or so Nina in the back. Exactly. So, so you talk via Alexa. So Alexa will talk to Nina. Exactly. So you're you're ordering the pizza just as Emma said the the, <laughs> the mistake thing with the TV uh, Alexa thing, y just with the pizza. It's same as with pizza, but it's Nina who does the process. So Nina. Yeah, exactly. So that will roll out wherever you are. 
to some kind of order and the, the pizza baker will do it and then there are some kind of a delivery thing with a car or a bicycle or whatever. Maybe a drone later, I don't know. Okay, <laughs> so what's uh, Swedbank's vision for Nina then? Well, it's, it's uh, quite simple. It's uh, like, of course, effortless. It should be effortless to, to use this kind of a thing. <laughs> And uh, we, we are bold to say that, uh, well, we want all communications to start with Nina, especially in the digital channels. Um, and wh wh why we did choose Nina, okay, of course, there was weren't so many of them, but we saw directly that she could, you could speak to her, you could text to her, and she can also reside in all of these devices, um, whatever comes up in the future. But uh, it, it's really important that she understands what, what I want, th the natural language understanding, and al also giving her cap capabilities to know who, who, I'm, who I am. And upon that, make a decision, okay, do, you want to do, do we want to do, uh, have an automated service around this, or do we need someone to guide them or, or, or assist the customer? So we s we early on we saw that th these were capabilities that they had in the roadmap and also they had in place and, and we, we went for it. And uh, how, we how we learn Nina, it's uh, this approach. In the beginning of 2014, they, uh, these bots uh, weren't so, so clever in the learning process. Uh, it, it needed to be very much manual work put in to have it quality, uh, the answers. So, and that said, we were teaching Nina. So we had a ca some kind of designed approach uh, towards the learning process. But now we're seeing, and, and uh, I know that SAP has it also, uh, it's more of human, humans are more in, into the learning process. I think Erica showed it uh, in one of her, her demos. Uh, and that's I including uh, humans more in the conversation. So when the agent, uh, the virtual agent can't answer the question, it, it automatically passes on that to a uh, um, person, and that person answers the customer and in the same time trains the agent. This is the answer you will, you want, uh, we will give. So then we can speed up the learning process. And then <coughs> somewhere in the end, of course, the machine learning thing. Uh, Watson is here. Watson is here. So if you if you <laughs> want some kind of uh, guidance where we are, Nina is uh, here and here at, at this stage. I think Amelia is more here, and Watson is more here. Uh, Watson, uh, in in my point of view, and I have some experience of it, they haven't uh, got gotten this thing kicked off so much. There are really cool, cool demos out there, but towards customers, they're, they're, they're not so, so common. It's more here for now, but that's now. And uh, where Nina is today at Swedbank, uh, it's on the front page. And we were quite bold enough uh, early on to have her, to have her really uh, fronting her. And as you see, there's no picture. There's no uh, actual face of Nina. And what that was a strategic decision back then, 2014. The, the, the market was uh, more, if you have the face that it was more funny. It, it tended to uh, encourage more funny questions. And we are a bank. We are funny sometimes, but not that funny. We try to be serious <laughs> in our business. So uh, not putting a picture up there tends to have more of a serious questions. <coughs> so that was a strategic uh, thing we did. Um, so and we have stuck with that for for now, and that's for now. Um, so we we put it up there. We we loaded it with like the top hundred questions that we thought the questions <laughs> the customers had, and then we just launched it, and it was not so good. <coughs> so we had to tweak it really much when we launched it, and. Uh, then suddenly it, we, we really, uh, it really delivered the results. So now, now we are up, I, I will show you statistics later, but we are up to like 80% of the questions asked, we can, uh, we can answer them, 80%. And we also have it for internal usage, um, and that is to access regulatory information. With all these uh, regulations coming out, it's hard to keep up as a co-worker, 
So we are we are uh, helping our coworkers to to access to that kind of uh, of information. So uh, and it uh, it it works like they are typing in the question, uh, and it shows also if there are a customer answer that we are giving, then the the, the employee sees that. But also ha they have also the possibility to show internal information, and this thing pops up, and then they can read more about. Uh, how to solve this kind of errand. It's really uh, popular in the in the contact center, especially with the new people coming in. We have a, a really much um, uh, many new people are coming in in that area, so that's, it's a good training tool. They they like it a lot. Okay, some st statistics then. <coughs> uh, to manage this thing today. We have four content managers. We're calling them content managers. So they are responsible for the quality in Nina. And they are uh, reading conversations all the time for, for, uh, from customers, uh, see if we answer correctly, and, and uh, do this all of these qual quality things every day. So four people. OK, what kind of, I, I heard some business case uh, questions here. OK, what, but what does that equal then? What kind of work do they do through Nina? Today, it's like this. She's doing this, they are doing this kind of amount of work. And so that's uh, like 50 people. And we are now up, uh, now up to 75,000 conversations through our agent a month, which equals like 50 uh, full time equ equivalents. And uh, we are uh, up to a really high uh, first contact resolution rate. Okay? The question I always get, okay, but are the, are the customer ha happy with this answer then? How do we know that th the customer is happy? Do we have that metric also? Well, as you know, with all service, it's really difficult to ask, uh, are you happy with this answer? Of course, uh, many of them are, but <laughs> many, many of them aren't. But is that because of the answer that the bots are giving, or are they like dissatisfied with the answer itself? Maybe it's a fee that <laughs> they have to pay, or uh, some other thing, an interest that they don't want to, uh, to lower, and whatever. So it's a really tricky question. Are you happy with this question? Uh, the more uh, correct question would be like, okay, did the agent uh, understand your question? That's the more, more appropriate one. And th that we see is uh, more high. That's higher. But we see that we are uh, having a really good quality in it for now. Hans, in mm -hmm. terms of conversations, these are verbal conversations or yeah. all sorts of also typing? Yeah. Uh, wh when we launched it, as you saw uh, early on, uh, the, there were like uh, just a bar, a uh, search bar almost. And that tended to, okay, this is a Google bar. They just typed in one question. Borrow, uh, just borrow. <laughs> not, not money also. Borrow or trouble or whatever. So we, ne we needed to train Nina to take care of that. Okay. What do you mean with trouble? Do you mean this? And maybe suggest some, some things. But then we see now, we have moved in, I will show you that, we have moved Nina into uh, logged in mode. We have it in the internet back fa facing customers. There the tendency is more typing in a whole sentence. And it also tends to be more about me. Out in, in Swedbank.se it's more like the general question. Now it becomes more personal. Okay, and the questions asked are the, <laughs> the top ones are like bank ID. I know you have in the Baltics now some, uh, yeah, smart ID. Thank you, smart ID. It's the same thing. And uh, there are a lot of questions around cards. My card is lost. It's broken. Or much about around cards. And uh, other kind of general questions uh, regarding uh, economics. Uh, borrow money, uh, insurances, so on, so on. And the cool thing with all of this, you can easily, easily fetch what, what is the top of mind question. You can really easily highlight those. And also we can fetch, if we don't have an answer, and that, answer is, uh, that question is rising, then we can, oh, this is rising, we have to do something about it. Okay, now is the demo part always <laughs> a little exciting. Yeah, of course, I'm logged out. 
<coughs> so I will log in. Okay. So now I'm logged in to the internet bank. And we have, uh, uh, can do it like this. Here, we have Nina up here on that corner here. There's Nina. So uh, it's a tab, it's called in Swedish Frågos, and that's Ask Us uh, in translation. And uh, what it says here is, hi Hans, my name. And it says, uh, this is an automatic chat, it, and it will be better the more you use it. What can we, well, what can we help you with? So um, I can ask here, um, <coughs> um, I want to borrow money maybe. And then Nina says, okay, uh, some, some information around loans, but what do you want to, to apply a loan for? So here I can choose uh, apartment, uh, car, private loan, or gather your loans at us. Maybe I have loans around uh, somewhere. Uh, maybe I want to, to narrow it uh, to have all our loan, my loans uh, in Swedbank. I can have a loan to maybe an apartment here. And then it says, okay, what kind of... Uh, loan application do you want to do here? And I, I will select that. And then uh, it says here, uh, some information of how how we see on the, on, the, on the loan application. And they can also click here to go into the internet bank where they can apply for the actual loan. So now we have given them some kind of information stuff. And they have also clicked to get to where they can proceed and do the calculation. Uh, and then I can uh, uh, maybe type in this question that uh, uh, I, I want a bank ID. Maybe this is a person that uh, hasn't uh, uh, gotten the bank ID. They have the, this uh, security device uh, thing only and they want the bank ID. And then there comes uh, some information around what bank ID is and what kind of what kind of a bank ID do I want? And we have some some uh, options here. And maybe I want to do the mobile bank ID here. And here I give some uh, are given some information around uh, how to uh, uh, what, what mobile bank ID is and where do you want to to um, uh, connect the mobile bank ID? Is through the app or is it through the internet bank? Okay, it's, it's uh, through the app, and then it gives me directions here how to do it. So then I can sit with my, my phone and just uh, follow these instructions, and so on. Yeah. And also it says here, do you want to add a service to this bank ID, which you, which you can do, and then you can click here to uh, activate that. And then it will take me to the page in the internet bank where to actually do the activation. So we, we can use Nina uh, really now for guiding it, the customer to the right place and so on. We, we recently launched uh, a new UI, uh, uh, as, as opposed to next year, uh, U, uh, last UI? year. UI? You might want to spell out UI. Oh, sorry. User interface. Sorry. The, the look and feel of this page <laughs> was changed from a really old one to this really cool new one. But that was a really big change for a lot of customers. And they had a lo lot of, oh, how do I find this now? So this guiding thing is come really much used. Um, okay. And then we can type in here, um, uh, Jog, I want to order a new card. Okay. This question can be like, okay, why do you want a new card? Maybe it's stolen. It uh, it's broken. The, the expiry date has gone out, or, or no, I, I haven't. I have. I don't have a card since before. So then, uh, if it's stolen, I can click here. And we say, okay, if it's stolen, please call this number to to block it, and uh, proceed. And it's an instruction how to proceed. And also, if I type in uh, that my card has been stolen.
then then it will give me the answer directly, not asking me, okay, why why do you want uh, the card? Then it di directs me directly to that answer. So it recognizes uh, that. <laughs> no, you you don't have to do that. Uh, you can block your card by calling this number. Yeah, I mean yeah, yeah, yeah. Of course, you're robbed. You maybe you have to go to the hospital. Also. <laughs> okay. Um, okay, and then you can. Okay, how funny can you be with this? Uh, of course, we can we can trigger funny questions. Uh, if you uh, ask, uh, like s we call them social questions, we can we can fetch those and uh, try to answer them in uh, that kind of funny way if we want to. But uh, we have decided not to do that because that's taken a lot of maintenance to do. So we are having like a standard response. So this is an automatic chat. Uh, we can only help you with the com more common questions uh, or something. So um, we are uh, keeping away from that kind of a, 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 <laughs> a way of uh, trigger a conversation. But you can be like, if, you, if I use the word I know that in I, I have heard that in the Baltics you don't whether you know, you don't use the word I, I accidentally killed this device. <laughs> More it's it's broken, you don't kill it. But in, in sometimes in Sweden you we can use that word. Oh I I accidentally killed this one. So if I type in that uh, that I killed my security device. Um, Then it says, okay, <laughs> to get a new one, you have to do like this. So it rec recognizes murder, uh, dosa, uh, kill the security device. So uh, we, so we we can do th this stuff if uh, if we want to, if we choose to. Okay, um, and. Uh, we are exploring uh, stuff like okay now you see it like okay but it's just text and it's links and here you do it why ca why can't you just do it here why can't why can't Nina just execute a new card order or something else well that's the next n that's the next step we launched this one uh, uh, just because uh, th just before Christmas so now she's in the internet bank now she is in the logged in mode and now we can do stuff. So we have a really cool backlog uh, in our uh, in our team to work with, <coughs> and some final things. Just the Mörda Bank Dosa. Where where did <laughs> that come from? Well, this is a really funny uh, small story. Uh, our customer uh, center worker in in uh, the Facebook team had this conversation with the customer. <laughs> okay, so, so, so what happened here? I mean, the customer is, is in a really <laughs> bad situation here. And uh, she, she expresses that in a, f in a humoristic way, and also adi adding a smiley towards this conversation. And uh, Eric, <laughs> really cool guy, he recognizes the situation that customer is in, and also the tonality, how uh, she expresses herself, and answer back in the same way with humor. And she was so happy with this answer, so she did, she take a screenshot and, and put that on Facebook. Oh, look, the bank answered this. Really cool story. Okay, could Nina be this? Could Nina be like Eric? Well, you have seen what SOB did. Cool stuff. We can do cool stuff also. <laughs> so why not? Why not? But that's a matter of also expressing. But you saw Amelia reacting to the how you you were speaking and she adapted to that so of course we can do it if we if we want to and also where will we where, where are we seeing this uh, going then well we are seeing that uh, doing speaking to this thing we think that is uh, next things I mean there come up so many devices that you're going to speak to we are not doing it so much yet but we are going to do it so we think that's a thing, uh, especially going mobile. Uh, using this uh, as, a, as a way to call, 
to the to the bank, having Nina in front, maybe try to to answer the question, and then let uh, the if if it can't answer, we decide that we, this is a question that we want a human to speak to. Why don't you use the voice? Of course, the chat. We don't have that today. Escalation to chat, but that is something that we are looking into. Of course, having this in all kinds of channels, uh, we have the Facebook uh, customer service today. Uh, we can we can put uh, Nina in front of Facebook there also, and, and and other areas. The hidden agent thing, having a human as a coworker for Nina in behind, as I talked to you earlier, we see that as a thing to fa have faster learning process. We also see that now that we have it put into the logged in mode, we see that now is now the personal touch comes in. I want to know more about me, my things, and also have Nina doing the, the, them for me. So we see that as a good big area. We see it. Uh, uh, they're often talked about. Okay, can this sell stuff? Of course, if you plug in the CRM system here into this, this is like okay, she can present the next next, next best action thing here. Early in the conversation, okay, you have a, a uh, you have a own going loan errand. Do you want to? Uh, is that why you're you're trying to contact us? We can we can say this in the conversation, and we can also end the conversation with okay, you 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 do you know that you're lacking this thing? We have a special uh, price for you. You can click here to do it or say it to me. I will do it. So of course she this is, can be a sale thing. And also as uh, Emma said earlier in the in the panel de debate um, uh, discussion, the third party integrators. Why not uh, give my services the Mina Chenster plug in here to Nina? And she can cancel a subscription for you, and so on. Mm -hmm. So there, are, it opens up a lot of possibilities. Yeah, that's it. Fantastic. Yeah. So let me see if we have uh, one question. That's probably yeah. Go ahead. I have a question regarding GDPR. So basically, there is a rule to be uh, the right to be forgotten. If uh, Nino learns about me, how to make to forget? Yeah, G good question. Uh, I, I I want to make it uh, even more cooler. That question. Do you know where Nina lives? In France, in the cloud. Wow. <coughs> okay. Of course, we are now pushing boundaries towards here, and we are having GDPR discussions all of the time. For now, uh, we have done it like this. Uh, we, ha we don't have any personal uh, information now. We just, she just, just knows my name, and Hans is a, not that m it's a quite common name in, in Sweden. <laughs> but of course, when we're moving into more personal information stuff, we have to, do, we have, to have the, the legal and compliance people with us from start. To, to mitigate those risks have happening uh, ending up in a GDPR situation. So of course, we are, we are looking upon it. And we also have discussions with the vendor, masking stuff and cryptation and you know, the security things and you know, everything. So of course, we have those discussions here. And you have to have the consent from the customer. I mean, Nina can say, do you want, according to this uh, law, we I have to ask you, do you want to do this? Yes. Okay, that's a, is that a consent then, from a pe from a man, <laughs> or what is that? Oh, the lawyer says no. <laughs> this is really cool discussions that we have to have, moving into this area. <laughs> <laughs>